Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Uh, my name's Camille Vivaris, and I'm going to share a little bit about my mother. Uh, this isn't a coincidence that we're having this the day after Mother's Day. And, you know, like Audrey Lord said, there's no such thing as a single issue. And my, my mother lived that and taught me that from the issues that she faced from a child to uh, her death. So my mom was an immigrant. She lived in a corporatist society that uh, favored fascism over literacy. She moved to the United States with a lot of hope in the American dream. And um, she worked for 41 years in the garment industry sewing textiles uh, in, uh, in Fall River, Massachusetts. And my mother taught me a lot about dignity and about struggle. When she came to the United States, it was, it was, she came from a small farm in the Azores where there was a mini fundo system, which basically is a patriarchal system that was exported from Europe all around Latin America. And it pushed people off the land it pushed uh, women out of positions of power and democracy in society. So her life, uh, even though she was a union member her whole life, um, she never made a living wage. And when she came here, she never went to high school. Um, but it's people like my mother that taught me the importance of fighting for immigrant rights, worker rights, and fighting for the poor and with the poor. Because she knew firsthand, she would tell me stories about Christmas that she would get an orange for her Christmas gift, and that was something that uh, she was so grateful for. And we have our morality wrong in this country. We're across the street from the Providence Place Mall, and there's a track to jobs that's built to working in the retail sector, a sector that doesn't pay a living wage. Many of us are in debt, where instead of competing about who can care for each other and love our neighbor, we're looking at the size of our television screens. And the moral fabric of society has broken down. And that's what this movement is about. It's about taking back the true values and calling out political leaders that don't represent us and don't share our values that have been in power way too long. So Reverend Ebony and myself are going to deliver a letter up to the leaders at the State House. I'm going to share a few words from it. And we're putting them on notice. And I know we're, we're taught, many of us are taught that we're not enough. We're not smart enough to govern. We're not smart enough to be part of decisions. And that's systematic. They want us to feel that way because they want to benefit from our exploitation. So we're saying enough is enough. We're starting this, it's going to be six weeks, but it's going to be our lifetime of struggle. Because we can't betray our sisters and brothers and LGBT friends and family. We're not going to give up. It's longer than six months. This is just the beginning. We're not going to go away. This isn't a symbolic protest. This is a life and death matter. And we will use civil disobedience as a tactic. And some people have questioned that. Why would you put your body on the line? Our bodies are already on the line. My mother died when she was 61 years old. She had worked 41 years in a, as, as, in a sweatshop. She never got a day of pension because of the health care in this country. They pushed her back to work multiple times. She was misdiagnosed. And all of us have stories like this of injustice for health care, systematic racism, and it's only going to end if we decide that it's going to end. So today we're going to put the leaders at the State House on notice and we're going to keep on coming back and we're going to keep on growing and we need other people that are already organizing, right? We know there's, there are many issues, there's grassroots groups that we need to connect with and we're going to follow their lead. This is about directly affected people being the experts. So our letter says, Dear Governor Romano, Romando, Speaker of the House, Nicholas Mattiello, Senate President Dominic Ruggiero, 
all over the country in state capitals like Providence and Washington, D.C., policies that promote systematic racism, poverty, the war economy, and ecological devastation are threatening our democracy and decaying our national morality. So if anyone wants a copy of this, but we know this paper is only as strong as the people standing behind it. So this isn't about symbolic action, this is about people power, this is about us talking to our neighbors, talking to our friends, and building confidence, because the people that need to speak out the most are the ones that have been taught that their voice doesn't matter. They're the experts. They're the ones that have led me to this moment. So I thank you for sharing this moment, and I thank you for building this movement together.